Good evening, folks. This is your ticker guy, Carl, coming at you with an update on the markets, the economy, and everything else on the 11th of November. Well, let's start with credit. There's a lot of mouth breathers out there talking about how credit is normalizing. Don't you believe it for a minute, folks. I watched two things in particular in order to figure out where we are in terms of the credit markets. The first is ordinary corporations, high-quality credit. How is it placing? What are they having to pay up in order to get their debt to go? Verizon Wireless, crazy, crazy yields that are being demanded in order for these offerings to be subscribed. There's nothing to like there in the credit issuance sphere at all. There's nothing in the issuance of securitized credit cards, securitized mortgages, securitized commercial loans. And oh, by the way, let's talk about the CMBX. That's commercial construction, and that's a major problem. Those spreads have blown out several times over the last several months. The latest time is happening again now. And the pattern has been that after the government intervenes in some way and tampers with things, the spreads come in for a little while, and then they begin their relentless march. It's happening again. The problem with this is, what this is telling you is that all of these machinations and all this great stuff that the government is supposedly doing, it's not working. And the effect that it has is both fleeting and has no lasting benefit. So, you know, we get a little bit of benefits, kind of like, you know, I get I get my, my arm run over by a car. It hurts like hell. I drink a couple of shots of whiskey. I don't hurt anymore <laughs> for about an hour. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of thing that's going on here, folks. So we got some problems there, and this is going to be the next big shooter drop. By the way, Donald Trump, eat your heart out, buddy. Building office towers in the middle of a real estate blow-off, that was a really wonderful idea, especially in Chicago. He's now suing the lenders. There's apparently a bunch of cross-complaints and all kinds of fun. The real bottom line here, guys, is whether or not Trump and people like him are going to be able to sell all of the capacity that they're building. If the answer is no, they're in big trouble. If the answer is yes, they'll survive. Those are the issues. That's what we need to be watching because that's the next place that goes, folks. Usually, 6 to 18 months behind residential, eh, we're just about right on cue, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. All right, second, Barack Obama, first black American president in the United States, half black, mulatto, mutt, whatever you want to call it. He calls himself a mutt. I think that works perfectly well. I'm a mutt, too, all right? I mean, unless you're a 100% American Indian, you are a mutt if you live in this country. So I don't see a problem with that. I think that's fantastic. I voted for Mr. Obama, and the reason is very simple. The Democrats now own this mess. They either do the right thing, or they're not going to be able to blame anybody else. And this obstructionism bullshit that goes on in Washington, D.C. When you have both houses of Congress and you have the presidency, you don't have the luxury of pointing fingers anymore. I think this is a good thing. I also believe that Mr. Obama has the intelligence and the understanding to get to the bottom of this stuff and stop it. Now, whether he has the will and the ability to overcome the screaming from the idiots in his party is another question entirely. That I don't know, but we're going to find out. Bad news is, for him and for the Democrats, if they don't manage to do this right, it's going to be hard to find a Democrat in the House in two years, and it will be almost impossible to find one anywhere in Washington, D.C. in four. The other side of that is if they do the right thing, they will be rewarded, and they will probably have power for the next 20 years. I think this is a perfectly acceptable set of conditions. Do the right thing for the country, ladies and gentlemen, and you're rewarded. Do the wrong thing, and you're out on your butts. The Republicans will still be around, and we'll have some other party who will take the Democrats' place. By the way, take a look at the history of the Whigs. Where they're instructed there. Okay, General Motors, Ford, Chrysler, three tottering firms, all of which deserve to go bankrupt, all of which should go bankrupt, and all of which are screaming for a bailout. Everyone's talking about two million American jobs are lost if they go bankrupt. Oh, come on, guys, it's a load of crap. Look, that the firm goes bankrupt doesn't mean that they stop operating and they cease to exist. That's garbage. We need to apply some genesis plan to this. Let's do a forcible cram down, debt to equity, put them through three prepackaged Chapter 11, and if the government needs to come in in a super senior position in order to guarantee that the dip financing goes, I'm okay with that. Now, I'm talking about wanting another $20, $50 billion. Hey guys, I happen to think that that is a perfectly legitimate place to put the money, provided they go through Chapter 11. Now if not, uh-uh, I say not one thin dime. 
If we're going to do this, we need to do it in a way that does two things. The first is we need to get the pension guarantees and this other contract crap off their sheets. It needs to go away. The only way you do that is you put it into the PBGC. That's the federal agency that oversees pensions for firms that go bankrupt. The purpose there is that they go ahead and they take a look at the liabilities and the assets that are in the plan and they figure out what the real payable benefits are given the asset levels that exist. That has to happen. Secondly, the capacity that these folks have has to come down massively. We need to retool for about 11 million units in the United States, not 18. That is a huge decrease and it isn't going to happen voluntarily. The only way I can come up with it this will work is to put them through Chapter 11. We're going to see whether or not it's done right. My money is on it being done wrong, but somewhere, somewhere we have to draw the line on this. And I say this is the best place to do it. And then make very clear to all the rest of the businesses in America, this is going to be the model. I don't care if you're a bank or not. This is how it's going to happen from now on. You're going to go through something similar to the Genesis plan. You're going to get crammed down. You're going to go through three prepackaged Chapter 11. No more handouts. No more bailouts. Listen, $350 billion, $70 billion of it has gone to, to pay bonuses. We've seen firms that are being acquired at 60% discounts to their value that was declared in their balance sheet three days earlier. That's a load of crap. Right? There's enough fraud in this thing as it stands right now. Probably indict thousands of people and jail them all. And we should. But I don't know whether it's going to happen. What I do know is that we're not getting anything for all this money we're spending. And oh, by the way, we have a little problem borrowing that. You see, China seems to think that they're going to need to spend more money internally. Probably true. The rest of the world's got a little problem, too, and that's how we sell our treasury debt. Watch that very carefully, and watch Ireland. They are potentially the next big trouble spot outside the United States. Remember the last time, and what I've said it a few other times, I think this was in the last video, is that what I'm expecting is the next big explosion is going to start outside the United States. It's not going to originate here. It's going to originate elsewhere. Okay, markets in general. Folks, we have key levels that we're sitting on right now. We're in that general range. 825, of course, is the swing lows. Those have to hold below that 768. If we violate 768 on a closing basis, even for one day on the S&P 500, we confirm the double top pattern that is evident if you take a look at a 20-year chart. The problem is, if we confirm that, where's the bottom? Well, it could be around 450, and it could be in the 200s. We don't know. But what we do know is that from a technical perspective, holding that 768 is very important. I expect that somewhere in the 825 to 768 area, somewhere in there, maybe even from here, we're going to get a rip your face off rally. That is not the bottom. If you're going to trade it, that's fine. But if you're thinking that the game is over, no. What you need to look at is this. Will the economy turn in 6 to 12 months? Because that's typically when the stock market bottoms. My best guess on the economy bottoming out goes along with housing, goes along with everything else, somewhere around 2012. we got a while. And what that says is rallies, if you're trapped long, are there to be sold, at least for now. As far as the, the general tenor of things, hey, listen, as long as the market is moving around 5% a day, you're not back to normal. Okay? Don't listen to the mouth breathers on CNBC. All they're going to do is cost you your life savings. More people lost their shirts trying to call the bottom after the first decline in 2000 than anything else. Because what ends up happening is you buy back into local tops and then the market tanks again. Probably won't have an update from me next week. I'm going to be off running around over the Thanksgiving holidays, but I will be back with you soon. If you want something sooner than that, you come over to market-ticker.org or tickerform.org. Click on the FAQ, and there is information in there on the forum. If you get a free account, how you can get into the technical analysis and the nightly videos, as well as some other special features. Have a good day.